So far, we have seen diffraction happening because of Huygens' principle, which says that if you have a gap, and the gap is a similar size to the wavelength, and you have waves coming in towards the gap here, then each point on the gap there acts as a source of waves. This is Huygens' principle. And each one of those sources of waves emits a wave, and the waves interfere with each other, and you end up with circular wave patterns like that. Now, actually, the wave patterns are a little bit more complicated than this, and I'm going to show you how they look using a laser. Now, I've turned the lights off so you can see a little bit better. Here is a point from a laser, so the laser is being shone at the board. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a single slit in front of that laser and see what happens to the pattern. Now, because the single slit is blocking out a lot of the light, only some of the light is getting through. You can see, first of all, the intensity is much lower. Less energy is getting through the slit. Now, you need to get a little bit closer to see the pattern, but I'll show you the pattern has changed as well. You can see here that there's a wide maximum, and then if you look very closely, you can see not only is there a wide maximum, there's also some other secondary and tertiary maxima on either side of that wide maximum in the middle. So you've got a wide maximum followed by a secondary and a tertiary, and if the laser was bright enough, they would continue, but a secondary and a tertiary maximum there and there. And these ones are less wide than this one. Now we've got an equation that can explain that pattern, which I'll show you now. Okay, up here at the top, I've drawn the, uh, the, the pattern that we saw. I've made it a bit bigger, but I've drawn the pattern. We had the wide central maximum, and then we had the smaller ones on either side. Now, the wide central one was much brighter. So if we were to draw a graph of intensity, against distance, then we would have a big peak here, and then much smaller peaks here and here. And we would have the same on the other side, like that. Okay, now that is a classic single slit diffraction pattern. And the equation that we can use tells us the angular separation, theta, from the peak here, the middle of the peak, to the first minimum. And that is the same angular separation as the first minimum to the second minimum, and the second minimum to the third minimum. So the central maximum is twice as wide as all the other smaller ones. Now this angle here, theta, can be uh, calculated using the very simple equation, theta equals lambda over b, where b is the width of the slit. So the smaller the slit, the bigger the angle. So if we use a smaller slit, first of all, less energy is going to get through, so the, intense, the peak intensity is going to be lower, but also it's going to be wider. Theta is going to be bigger. So for a smaller slit, the graph would look something more like 